Hi there, this is Kodajit, your friend in programming, and today I am going to talk about reading and writing files in Electron. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna learn how to read and write uh, text files. So we will work with some basic text files and we will read them and we will modify them and write them. And we will also learn how to read and write JSON files. So when you need to save storage, you need to save settings of your app or you need to save any kind of properties. Maybe, maybe you've got an object, maybe you've got, a, got some information that you want to persist. You should do that in JSON because it's very easy and very easy to use inside of Electron. So we'll see that too. So let's get started right away. So here we have Visual Studio Code. This is a free IDE from Microsoft. It's an open source IDE. And in my opinion, it's perfect for Electron. It works very, very well. It works for Node.js too. So let's get started by creating a new folder somewhere. Uh, let's actually open a folder. So I'm gonna go to my hard drive, make a test project. Let's call it app 001 and click on select folder. Now I've got an empty folder open in Visual Studio Code and we're gonna set up our Electron app here. So we're gonna open the terminal. This is the terminal and you can see some more options like problems, the, the bugs and all, the output after compilation, the terminal and the debug console where you can have console.logging and debug messages. So let's set up a new Electron app and I recommend that you use the Electron Forge. So we're gonna use npx. npx is a command uh, in npm with which you can run a command, uh, run, a, run a package one time. You don't need to install it. You need, don't need to download it to your computer. So we're gonna use npx click create Electron app and give it a name app 001 and press enter. So download it. All right, so that's done. The project is created and it's in a subfolder now. So let's open that subfolder actually. And now we have an Electron project. Let's try to run it. So let's have a look at package.json. We have npm start. So let's try npm start and let's see what in our, what's in our bare bones project. Here we are. It's a simple hello world application and you can use this as the application starting point. It's a great way to save time because you don't need to set all the files manually. This is the visual HTML file that you can modify. There's a CSS file. This is the JavaScript that you can use. And this is the package or JSON. So this is basically a full featured Electron app and it's a great way to start off a new project. All right, so I've added a couple of things to the code and uh, I'm gonna show you exactly what it adds, what it brings to the project. So here we have the project. Now you can see that there is a text box and there is a save button. And here we have Chrome developer tools on. So let me show you exactly what I did to make all of this appear, all of this happen. So the first thing in the index.js file, in the create window constructor, I added a web preferences section with context isolation and node integration both turned to on. And I also added a preload file. Now, I hope all of you are familiar with the concept of preload, but if not, then very, very quickly, a preload file is a special file that is loaded along with the view, along with the interface to connect the interface to the node backend. So here I've created a new preload file called preload.js and I've added just a little bit of code. The first is IPC renderer require. So this is something that we're gonna use in the code. And then I am listening to the document uh, you know, DOM content loaded event and I'm attaching an event to the button click over here. You can see first time getting the button and then I'm attaching a click event to the button and in that click event, I'm getting the value of the text over here and I'm sending it to the node backend using IPC renderer. So we are actually in the renderer process over here. I hope you're also familiar with the node, uh, with the electron uh, processes. There are two processes, IPC main and IPC renderer, and you need to communicate between both. You need to uh, deal separately with the data. IPC renderer will deal with the, with the display of your content, the web browser, the Chromium part of it, and IPC main will, will work with the backend part of it, the Node.js part of it. So these two processes need to communicate. 
and from the IPC renderer when you want to send a message to IPC main one of the things you can use is dot send IPC renderer dot send and I do have a tutorial about IPC main and IPC renderer and you can check it out on my channel it's quite detailed and you will understand this in detail if you look at that tutorial but we're going to continue with this so the next step is to trap this event to trap this channel inside of IPC main and then write the content to an actual file so we're going to do that now and here we are in IPC main in the index.js file and we are trapping the event save text using IPC main dot on and we have the value the text value that was passed on in the argument variable we call it text wall over here now to write the file to the hard disk or to access the hard disk you need to include a module called fs in node.js remember ipc main is all about node it's the node process so all the node apis are available to you so just include this file you can require fs module and you will be able to use the fs module to work with your file so it's very easy now you can use this construct to write the actual file what we're using is fs.write file uh, but actually node.js gives you more option too you also have append file which is to write to an existing file to add to an existing file you can just keep adding stuff there and there's another one called open file so you can open file to write to that and we're going to show you uh, this too i'm going to show you all these methods but let's focus on write file first let's try to understand it so write file takes some options the first thing is the file path you need to specify the file name and the path i've done exactly that i'll be writing the file called file1.txt in the temporary folder then you need to have your text value in this case it's a text string already so you don't need to two string it but if it's an object or you need to convert an object to a string then you can add two string otherwise it's perfectly fine finally we have to pass a callback to this function write file and this callback will have the error module the error uh, variable error argument if error is true if there was an error writing the file there will be a there will be an exception here and you can throw that exception or you can write log it and if there is no error then you can just know that the file is written so i am logging here to the console file written let's check it out let's see if it works uh yep things should be fine just everything seems to be in order so let's just do npm run start and here we go let's write hi world click save and if we go to our node module we can see in our debugger in our console that file is written let's go to the hard disk the temporary folder we have file one.txt and when I open it, you can see high world. So the file is indeed written. This is how you write a file using write file. Now there is another version of write file available to you. If you noticed here, this is a this is an asynchronous function because we are logging the result in a callback function. But let's what if you wanted to write this synchronously? You can use the fs dot write file sync. And here sync of course stands for synchronous and just pass it pretty much the same values the same arguments that you pass the write file function we've got the file name over here the file path and the name and the content of the file that you want to write let's commit it out and now let's run it again npm run start here we go and this time let's save hi world 2 let's see what happens click on save and you can see the file is written we've got high world 2 so this is a synchronous method which means node.js process will be waiting for this function to complete this file to be written before it will proceed to the next task the next line when you are creating a desktop app using synchronous functions is not such a bad practice when in comparison to when you're running uh, when you're running node.js on the server because when a single user runs your website they expect to wait for things to happen like a file written before they proceed to the next task all right now let's take a look at fs.append file so this time in append file you're going to do the same stuff pretty much the same function i'm gonna just select this and actually copy it to save time and of course need to remove the comments let's run it again 
how are you doing let's type in some new text and click save and this time when we open our file we will see that our text is appended to the existing content so we had hi world 2 over there now we also have how are you doing so append file obviously is to append your text to the to the existing content of the file and this too has a synchronous version append file sync and it works just like the write file sync function and now let's look at another method which is using fs.open now what fs.open does is it will let you open the file that you specify and it asks for a file mode open mode so you have options like open the file only for reading open the file only for writing or open the file for reading and writing in this case we've specified the mode w plus what happens in w plus is the file will be read for writing too so the content of the file will be read and if the file does not exist then the file will be created so there are modes and you can find this reference in uh, note.js reference just google for fs.open you will go to that page and you will be able to find exactly the mode that you want to use now the next the next callback the callback function in this case is the error so if there is an error the error field will be true and you can trap the error and then we have the file descriptor now this is an interesting concept when you do fs.open it gives you a file descriptor which is like a file handle and you can do operations on that file using the ft the file descriptor object now what happens in this case is you use this method when you want to do multiple operations on the file let's say you want to write multiple string you know multiple pieces of string to it you want to read it then check some options and write accordingly in it in multiple different places then you don't want to keep opening and closing the file again and again right so that's why what you want to do is you want to find a file descriptor and then do all your operations like append to the file or whatever and then finally to save the file you will call fs.close and and pass the file descriptor object to it and remember when you call functions like append file or write file they can also accept the ft object so if you don't want to specify the complete path like in our earlier function we're specifying the entire path and the file was opened immediately in this case what we're doing is we're passing the file descriptor the file is already open it's just you know the operation just happens and it goes to the next step and finally we close the file to save it and write the final file to the hard disk this is how you write using multiple operations as a final example i want to show you this module that i have to read and write json files so basically what this does is it takes an object a javascript object and persists it to the hard drive in json format let's take a look at how it actually works so we are requiring the file system module using require fs and the path module the path module you use to handle and work with directories using require.path of course and we've got a javascript class called storage with a file name local variable called file name in the constructor we allow the user to specify a file name which is opened when somebody passes a key you know like suppose you want to get a particular value from the uh, from the file you just pass the key this file is opened if it exists the data is consumed using json.parse the string data is converted to json and then the value is returned using the key that you supplied and when you set a key when you set a value to the key it's written again using read file synchronous we are using file sync because we are, we, are, we are using this in a desktop app we don't need to do async programming so much in a desktop app and if the file exists the current file data is read and the new data is appended and if the file does not exist it will be created and finally json is converted to string using json.stringify and the file is written so here is an example of the file that is written this this particular file has two values item one and item two with just two values set so it's very it's a json format file very easy to read you can read it too and in the code you will use it like this let storage equals to new storage that's the new object you give it the file name and then you set a particular key and whatever value you have here whatever object you have here you can have text too 
it will be written to the file entire objects can be persisted to, to the file using this system so it's a very easy way to persist any sort of information and in, that you have in your node.js file to uh, uh, to the hard disk and i have this file i have this entire module available for you you can use it in your projects too i'm dropping the github link to this file in on the, in the descriptions so go on and click on it you can see the code over there and you can use it in your own node.js projects i hope this video was helpful to you if you liked it if it was useful don't forget to give me a like and also to subscribe because i'm going to come to you with more videos on programming we are going to touch many many different topics and learn how to program using multiple formats for the web for the desktop for the mobile we're gonna cover everything so looking forward to go on on this wonderful journey with you this is your friend in programming kodajit signing off